Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this channel. In this Linux and Docker tutorial, we explain how to properly install Docker Desktop in Linux Ubuntu. We thoroughly explain all the steps. The main motivation for creating this tutorial comes from the fact that the installation of Docker Desktop in Linux Ubuntu might be highly non-trivial for students and people who are not familiar with Linux systems. Also, here is some background information on Dockers. Docker is a collection of platform as a service or PAAS programs that use virtualization to run and manage programs in packages which are known as containers. The program that manages and hosts the containers is called Docker Engine. Containers run independently from each other and they are isolated from one another. Containers contain their own software, configuration files and libraries. Also different containers can communicate with each other by using channels. You can also use Docker to run robot operating system, machine learning programs and different applications and programs. Okay, so here is the general website for installing Docker desktop in Windows. Here is the website. So, and here are all the instructions. Now, these instructions might be difficult to understand for complete beginners and consequently I will go over all the instructions and all the prerequis prerequisites together with you in this video tutorial and I will teach you how to properly install Dockers. So let's start immediately. The first step is to check the prerequisites. Namely, in order to run Docker Desktop, you have to have a list of programs and packages such that Docker Desktop can run without any problem. And in this step, we will check all the prerequisites and if you don't have a program or a package that is in a list of packages that are necessary to run, we will install them. First of all, you need to have 60 4-bit Ubuntu Linux 22.04. Note that 24.04 is still not supported. So first of all, let's start by starting the terminal. Click here and search for terminal. And here is the terminal. Then I am going to change the size of this terminal such that you can nicely see what I'm typing. To check the Linux distribution, you need to execute this command. And over here, you can see that I have Ubuntu 22.04, and if you don't have this version of Ubuntu, please install this version of Ubuntu. Then, to run Docker Desktop, you need to have hardware virtualization. That is, the hardware virtualization option needs to be enabled in your BIOS. System BIOS is usually started by restarting the computer and by pressing a certain keyboard key. In the case of my computer, which is HP Omen, I need to press Escape and F10 to enter BIOS. Then there is an option to turn on hardware virtualization. In fact, in my case, the hardware virtualization was automatically enabled on my machine when I purchased my computer. In your case, starting BIOS might require a different keyboard key, however, the principle is the same. Now, after hardware virtualization is actually enabled in the BIOS, we need to check that actually our Ubuntu system can recognize that the hardware virtualization is enabled. To do that, we have several options. First of all, we will run this command, and here you can see virtualization VTX. VTX is the virtualization of the Intel processors. And if you see something like that, this, and if you have an Intel processor, this means that the hardware virtualization is enabled. Another method is actually to do this. And if you see a number that's different than zero, this means that the hardware virtualization is enabled. In the case of AMD processors and computers, I'm not sure the name of the hardware virtualization, but they have something similar. So that's why you can use three options to verify. And another approach is to run this command to install CPU checker, enter your password, and over here you need to run this command. So let's run it. And you can see KVM acceleration can be used. This means that we have the hardware acceler acceler 
acceleration, or actually hardware virtualization. If you have hardware virtualization, then this KVM module should load automatically with the computer. However, it's still a good practice and good test to verify that actually KVM module will be loaded automatically. So in the terminal execute this and you should see something similar to this. KVM Intel, KVM, KVM Intel, KVM. Good. This means that we have KVM virtualization support and KVM module is automatically loaded. Then we need this program. I'm not sure how to, how to pronounce it. I'm going to call it QMU or KEMU and this should be version 5.2 or later. So let's install the recent version. First of all, run sudo apt update. Then after this command, usually you need to run sudo apt get upgrade. So wait here for a second since this might take some time. Let's run sudo apt get upgrade. Yes. And let's wait here. So this will take some time. Be patient. And finally, we can install this. OK, so let's continue. Then it's required to have systemd in its system. Since Ubuntu is based on Debian, it uses the systemd in its system. Next, we need to make sure that we have GNOME KDE or Mate desktop environment. To check our environment, we simply need to go to the command line, or better to say to the terminal, and to execute this. And you can see it's GNOME. And in addition, you can execute this thing. GNOME shell version. Now, here it's very important to mention the following. The official website that gives the list of prerequisites mentions this. For many Linux distributions, the GNOME environment does not support tray icons. And they say to add support for tray icons, you need to install a GNOME extension. For example, this extension over here. However, I'm going to install Docker's desktop without this extension, and I think it will work OK. But if not, we will have to install this extension. Next, configuring ID mapping should be enabled in user namespace. So let's verify that. Now, first of all, run this, and you should see this response. This is my username, and you should see this number range. Similarly, run this again, or better to say another command, sub git, and you should see something similar to this. If you see something like this, then it's okay. If not, you will need to execute this command as well as this command. Okay, next, you need to install standard unique password manager. To do that, you will simply run this command and click on yes. And here be patient. Okay, so let's proceed with, with installation. So what are the in installation steps? Now, I'm going to go to the installation website. Here it is. And I will also provide the link. Now, over here, you will see several things. First of all, we need to set up the Docker package repository. This is the first step of this tutorial over here. So we need to execute these lists of commands. To see these lists of commands, you simply need to go to this website over here. I will provide all the links. Okay, so let's start executing these commands and let's see what will happen. First of all, let's run this one, although we already updated, but never mind. Let's do it again. Then let's make sure that we have this. Okay, now we need to install this. Then we need to install this, or better to say run with curl this command. Then we need to do this. Okay, 
Next, you need to execute this big command over here. Here it is. And this should be fine. And finally, you need to do sudo apt update. And that's it. This will run the update again. Okay, so what's the next step? The next step is actually to download the latest dev package. So if you click over here, the download process will start. Okay, and the package, or better to say, the file will be in this folder. It will be in the downloads folder. Consequently, we need to navigate to the downloads folder. So go back to the terminal and make sure that you're in the home folder and then you can simply go to the downloads folder by typing this and let's see our file where is our file here it is and we simply need to execute this file so to execute this file we actually need to run this command and this command will actually run the installation you just need to make sure that you have amd64 that is the name of this file should match this file over here over here to execute the file in linux you need to type dot and then this backslash and let's run this okay you can see that it's going to take some space on your hard disk not too much click on yes and here be patient after the installation process is completed, you might see this error. However, you can simply ignore this error and this is mentioned in the installation manual. And finally, we can run dockers. But first, let's verify a few things. First of all, let's type this docker compose version and let's see. And we can see v28.1. This is the first check. Let's just see the docker version. Here it is, perfect. And you can also run it like this. Okay, and you can see a more detailed explanation. Perfect. Next, let's learn how to run dockers. You can simply click over here and over here you can type dockers. And you can click here and the docker will start. Now, I already started Docker once more, however, you will see the first window where you have to accept the license and after that you, you will enter a few things, for example your occupation and some other things, and you will get to this main window. So I already did it before running this, I didn't film that, however, after you do this it takes maybe like 10 seconds, you will see this. Now if you close the Dockers, you will see that the Dockers is running over here. And apparently we didn't have to install these tray icons so we can perfectly see everything here. You can pause, you can restart, you can quit. Okay, so let's quit. There is another command that can be used to run dockers and here it is. You can run this and the dockers will start. It's going to be activated over here. Okay, that's all for today and thanks for watching.